Hello! So you've just started Final Fantasy XIV, you've created your Warrior Light, and now you're stuck on picking a job. You saw a certain YouTuber, and how he loves Summoner and Bahamut, and you think to yourself, I want to be like him. So you picked Arcanist. Summoner is the coolest caster DPS ever. They literally use a book in order to summon Primals, Bahamut, and Phoenix to their side in order to dish out massive DPS. Summoner overall has a pretty simple rotation and a lot of mobility, so let's take a look. Let's start with your normal spells. Ruin is your main DPS spell. At level 62, you unlock Ruin 4. Ruin 4 is a separate button to Ruin 3, and you're able to use it once you use Energy Drain, a single target attack, or Energy Siphon an AoE attack. Ruin 4 itself is a strong AoE attack. Energy Drain and Energy Siphon will also give you two Aether Flow stacks, which you can use on Fester, a strong single target attack, or Pain Flare, an AoE attack. You also have your normal AoE spell, which is Outburst or Tri Disaster. You also have Physique, the same healing spell scholars have. It's really bad. Summoners also have a resurrection spell, which is very useful if one of your healers goes down, or if the party needs help with raising. At the start of any encounter, you'll want to summon your Carbuncle. Carby is your friend that has a few abilities of its own. Radiant Aegis will give you a personal shield that lasts for 30 seconds. At level 88, you'll get a second charge of Radiant Aegis. Searing Light will give you and your party members a 3% damage buff for 30 seconds. The AoE for this buff is centered around your Carbuncle, so make sure it's near the party when you use it. Be sure to keep in mind that your Carbuncle abilities can only be used while your Carbuncle is out. Alright, let's talk about your summons. At level 6, you'll unlock Aether Charge. When you use Aether Charge, it'll increase the potency of Ruin by 50 and Outburst by 20. This move lasts for 15 seconds, and when the duration ends, you'll gain a Ruby, Topaz, and Emerald Arcanum. These three LEGO pieces will allow you to summon Ruby, Topaz, or Emerald Carbuncles. Whenever you summon any of the Carbuncles, they'll go to your current target and do a strong attack on them. All of the Carbuncles will make Gem Shine change to different attunements based on which one you have summoned. Both Topaz and Emerald Arcanums will make Gemshine turn into Topaz and Emerald Ruin. Both of these moves are instant casts, with Topaz having a higher potency and Emerald having a faster global cooldown. When you summon the Ruby Carbuncle, it'll change Gemshine to Ruby Ruin, which is the strongest out of all three, but has a long cast time. Like Gemshine, Precious Brilliance will also change the different versions of Outburst based on the Carbuncle you have summoned. All of these moves are mainly used for AoE. At level 30, 35 and 45, all of your Carbuncles will be upgraded to their Primal Eggies. Ruby Carbuncle will change the E-Free Eggie, Topaz Carbuncle will change the Titan Eggie, and Emerald Carbuncle will change the Garuda Eggie. At level 50, all of your Eggies will use different attacks when you summon them. E-Free Eggie will use Inferno, Titan Eggie will use Earthen Fury, and Garuda Eggie will use Aerial Blast. At level 58, Aether Charge will upgrade to Dreadworm Trance. When you use Dreadworm Trance, It'll change Ruin 3 to Astral Impulse, which is stronger than Ruin 3 and is an instant cast. Outburst will change to Astral Flare, which is stronger than Outburst and is also an instant cast. At level 70, Dreadborn Trance will upgrade to Summon Bahamut, which means you can literally summon Bahamut to fight for you for 15 seconds. You also get an ability called Enkindle Bahamut, which will make Bahamut execute Ockmorn, an insanely powerful AoE attack. At level 72, you'll get Ruby, Topaz, has an Emerald Rite, which will replace Gemshine from now on. All of these moves are stronger than your upgraded Ruins. And at level 82, you'll get Ruby, Topaz, and Emerald Catastrophe, which will replace Precious Brilliance from now on instead of your upgraded Tri Disasters. At level 80, you'll be able to summon Phoenix after Bahamut. Phoenix will grant all nearby party members a regen for 21 seconds. Summoning Phoenix will change Ruin 3 to Fountain of Fire, which is even stronger than Astral Impact. Pulse and is an instant cast. Tri Disaster will change the brand of Purgatory, which is stronger than Astral Flare and is also an instant cast. You can also use Enkindle Phoenix, which will make Phoenix use Revelation, an insanely powerful AoE attack. One thing I should mention make sure to use all of your Arcanums before summoning Bahamut or Phoenix. You do not want to waste the strong DPS that comes from using a Primal Summon. Speaking of Primals, at level 90, Ifri, Titan, and Garuda Eggie will be upgraded to the 
their full primal forms. These massive primals will execute the same moves as before, but will be a bit stronger. By the way, you can change the size of all the primals by using the slash pet size command. At level 60, you'll unlock Astral Flow, which will change the different moves based on what you have currently summoned. When in Dreadworm Trance or with Bahamut out, it'll change to Death Flare, a strong AoE attack. With Phoenix out, it'll change to Rekindle, which is similar to Scholar's Excogitation, where you can place it on yourself or one party member, and when their HP falls below 75%, or when the duration ends, it'll give them a small regen. Rekindle will also give them a heal when you apply it to them. At level 86, all of your primal summons will change Astral Flow to some special moves. With Ifrit out, Astral Flow will change the Crimson Cyclone, which is Summoner's Gap Closer. Yes, you heard me right, Summoner's freaking Gap Closer, which also does AoE damage. Afterwards, it'll change the Crimson Strike, where you slam the book into the ground and deal AoE damage. With Titan out, Astral Flow will change the Mountain Buster after each Topaz right. Make sure to use Mountain Buster each time, because using another Topaz right will overwrite the current Mountain Buster, meaning you lose out on it. With Garuda out, Astral Flow will change to Slipstream, which has a long cast time, but will deal AoE damage and drop a circle AoE on the ground, which will do continuous damage over 15 seconds to any enemy that stands in it. I don't really like to talk about optimizations as much, since there's plenty of other videos for that, but if you want a good idea of which order to summon your primals, the general order is Titan first, then Garuda, then Ifri. Another order is Garuda, then Titan, then Ifri. Make sure to also use Searing Light before summoning Bahamut. If you want more explanation on optimizations and such, check out the Balance Discord. Link is in the description below. But yeah, that basically sums up summoners, so bye! Oh, really quickly, I also stream on Twitch. I'm currently doing a blind prog of Pandemonium Savage with my static, so come check it out. Link is in the description below, along with a link to my Discord.